Hi, hello. Today I will show you how I paint and render skin. Now I'm doing this in Procreate, but you can also try in other drawing apps. First, muddy colors. What is muddy colors? Basically, if you took the base color and then drag the color down, and it creates this desaturated color that looks like soil plus water. A lot of artists will tell you to avoid muddy colors at all cost, and that you should pick more saturated colors and maybe throw a bit of blue or purple in there. Looks easy, right? Well, of course it's easy. You're coloring a circle. Painting a human face is more complicated. The human skin captures variety of colors depending on the environment and lighting. But the thing is, if you apply these colors at first, it can get very distracting because you'd have to worry about these many colors. When instead, you should be focusing on anatomy or shape or whatever you're trying to improve. That's why I prefer to use muddy colors. Well, maybe not that muddy. It looks ugly, I get it. But anyway, I prefer using dull colors like this because I can just focus on building my portrait and add more colors using blending modes, which I'll talk about later in this video. So here's how I pick my muddy colors. Drag the color wheel slightly here and then drag the color a little bit to the right. And you can skip this, but I usually use multiply layer to apply this color. If you want darker color, just repeat the step. Or you can just skip the colors and do grayscale. But adding colors to grayscale is harder for me to do. I tried it last year and spent like 3 plus hours just to color it, so I decided to stick with these dull colors as the base shading. Number 2, Soft and Hard Shadows. This is a soft shadow, it's very soft, and this is a hard shadow. In portraits, we can see the hard shadow here and the soft shadow here. In semi-realistic art style, we usually combine these two shadows because using only hard shadow will make it more anime or cartoonish, while only using soft shadow will make it look like Barbie. <laughs> to create soft shadows, all you need is round airbrush. I like to use bigger size because it looks smoother, and I'm also using multiply layer so it looks a bit darker. Generally, I apply soft shadows around the face, cheekbones, forehead, lips and the neck. To create hard shadows, you need a lasso tool, airbrush, and any hard brush you like. I will write down the brushes I use in the description, as always. Now just create another multiply layer and use lasso tool to roughly map out the hard shadows. Using a reference as a guide will make your life easier. To create multiple selections in Procreate, tap on this gray circle after each selection and create another one. By the way, thank you so much Piakis for telling me in the previous video, really appreciate it, it saves me so much time. In PC, just press shift, and on IBS Paint, it creates new selection automatically. If your selection is squiggly, it's okay, my hand also trembles a lot. Now apply the shadows using airbrush. Leave some parts in lighter shadows, especially if it's further from the light source. And now we can refine the squiggly lines using hard brush. If there's some parts you want to erase, just use a soft eraser. Use lighter shadows for delicate parts like philtrum and the side of the nose. If your reference have like smile lines, is that what it's called, and wrinkles, use lighter shadows as well. Because if you don't, it's... it looks scary, okay? Unless you're drawing an elderly or hyperrealism, make it as soft as possible. Or just don't draw it at all, your art will still look good. Number 3. Add details later. It's not technically a step, more like a friendly reminder. It means if there's like freckles or beauty marks or makeup or any details on your portrait, add it later. If you add details now and then messed up somewhere and you cannot undo anymore because it has reached the limit, you would have to erase and then fix the shading that's also get erased and then fix your mistake and it's just not worth it. Focus on painting the overall face first and add details when it's like 75% done. Actually, you can also draw the details in different layer. But since I've had so many accidents where I draw in a wrong layer, I think it's safer for me to draw the details later. Number 4. Paint over the sketch. This is the part where I merge all the face layer including the sketch and paint over it. Here's a thing to note. You don't want to paint over the whole sketch because you will lose a lot of definition and details on the face. Paint over the parts you think is too rough or too dark. I just paint over the lip line, below the lips, under the eye, 
and his neck to make it smoother. Feel free to use smudge tool or airbrush if you want it to look softer. How about the other parts? Do we just leave it? Absolutely not. You see how messy this is? I mean, there's nothing wrong if that's the style you're going for, but I like tidier line so I will draw a line art over it. Just take the color of your sketch, or make it darker, it's up to you, and draw line art over your sketch. The good thing about it is that it covers up imperfections in your drawing. You see the face is kinda wonky before, but it looks neat after the line art. It's kind of like a cheat. Number 5. Blending modes. Here's where I start to apply different colors to my portrait. But first, let's paint his hair. Bibiri, babiri, and that's how you paint hair. I'm just kidding. I'll create separate tutorial about painting hair in the future. Anyway, let's start with our first blending mode, multiply. What it does is turn whatever color you pick into darker and more saturated color. So pick lighter color if you want to use multiply. I use this blending mode to make the shadows more saturated. Second blending mode is overlay. It turns every color you pick more saturated and a bit brighter. If you have a yellow base, use dark purple or pink on overlay to balance the colors. If you use red or orange, it will be even brighter and so, so orange. It hurts my eyes. But if you like this type of color palette, go for it. I use overlay to apply some colors on the eyes, lips, nose, and around the face. Now let me tell you about the power of blue. You often see professional artists add blue to their portrait and it looks really good. Where does the blue come from? Well, from the sky most of the time, and the color is reflected on the skin. It looks beautiful because it adds color variation to the portrait. Now I'm not entirely sure where to place the blue, so I have my trusty reference to guide me. I'm using the blending mode color because using overlay is too saturated. I feel like the color will be more beautiful if you add blue to the shadow and keep the lighting in warm color like orange. So I'll add some lights using the blending mode add. You can also try using color dodge, you know, summon your inner Ross draws. Now we can finally move to number 6, finishing touches, part 1. There are two parts, okay? Bear with me. First finishing touch is the details, like highlights on the lips and the eyes, and also eyelashes. Let's not forget about the nose highlight as well. After holding myself back and working on the portrait, this is the most satisfying part. But do not overdo the highlights though, because it can make the face look oily. Finishing touch part 2 is curves. What it does is emphasize colors and add more color variations. This part right here is for shadows. You drag it lower, it will make the shadows darker. This part is for lights. You drag it higher, it will make your portrait brighter. And this is for mid-tones. I don't think there's a right way to use curves. I usually just play around with it and oh. My iPad's dying. Anyway, it does take some time to get used to curve, so if it's too extreme for you, you can use color balance instead. Curve is available in all drawing apps, except maybe Ibis Paint. I think you have to pay for it. If there's an alternative, share the knowledge in the comments down below. And let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to leave a like, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!